Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism Presence Specific Advice on Coronavirus for People Living with Diabetes Recommendations from the American Diabetes Association and Diabetes UK By Professor Hazem El Ashmaoui Professor of Endocrinology, Faculty of Medicine Member of Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism AASD The most widely reported and potentially momentous story of the moment is the novel COVID-19 coronavirus, a respiratory pathogen that has already infected at least 100,000 people around the globe and killed at least 4,500. At least eight states around the United States have declared an official state of emergency, the entire nation of Italy is on lockdown, and the infection does not appear to be contained. But what exactly is the virus, and how should people with diabetes prepare themselves and their families to deal with it? First, it's important to define and understand what COVID-19 is, there's already a fair amount of misinformation and fuzzy language being used. In brief, it's a new strain of coronavirus, a family of viruses that includes a wide range of different strains, including some that cause the common cold. The 2003 Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus SARS-CoV, outbreak represents a previous strain of the pathogen, and the novel coronavirus outbreak that began in 2019, is the latest such wave of infections, though the two viruses are not directly related. A number of resources have been created, shared, and distributed to help people deal with the outbreak worldwide, and as a population living with inherently compromised immune systems, people with diabetes need to take special care. Falling ill, generally raises blood sugars and taxes the body more heavily in people with diabetes. So what can we do to prevent it? First off, it's important to understand that all the precautions for otherwise healthy people still apply for people with diabetes, perhaps more so. That means regular and sustained hand washing, whenever you use the restroom, eat, or use a public place, for at least 20 seconds or more. Sanitize frequently use technology, devices, and appliances regularly, your phone and laptop keyboard can be strong vectors for infection if ignored. Minimize unnecessary travel or gathering in large public spaces if at all possible, if there was ever a time to work from home, reschedule that trip or use delivery services, now is the time. In addition to these basic recommendations, there are some specific measures that people with diabetes ought to take. If you have diabetes and you have symptoms such as a cough, high temperature, and feeling short of breath, you need to continue taking your medication and consult your doctor. For those who routinely monitor their blood glucose, on the advice of their clinical team, they should continue to do this more often. We encourage people with diabetes to follow the guidance of the CDC and to review how you manage sick days. If you have diabetes and you become unwell for any reason, it's important that you follow sick day rules. Preparing for a sick day can make it easier. Gather your supplies. Phone numbers of your doctors and healthcare team, your pharmacy, and your insurance provider. List of medications and doses, including vitamins and supplements. Simple carbs like regular soda, honey, jam, jello, hard candies or popsicles to help keep your blood sugar up if you are at risk for lows and too ill to eat. If a state of emergency is declared, get extra refills on your prescription so you do not have to leave the house. Always have enough insulin for the week ahead, in case you get sick or cannot refill. Extra supplies like rubbing alcohol and soap to wash your hands. Glucagon and ketone strips, in case of lows and highs. Talk to your healthcare team about the following. When to call your doctor's office, for ketones, changes in food intake, medication adjustments. How often to check your blood sugar. When to check for ketones. Medications you should use for colds, flu, virus, and infections. Any changes to your diabetes medications when you are sick. If you get sick, some common tips are as follows and may vary for each person. Drink lots of fluids. If you're having trouble keeping water down, 
have small sips every 15 minutes or so throughout the day to avoid dehydration. If you are experiencing a low blood glucose below 70 mg per dl or your target range, eat 15 grams of simple carbs that are easy to digest like, honey, jam, jello, hard candy, popsicles, juice or regular soda, and recheck your blood sugar in 15 minutes to make sure you are coming up. Check your blood sugar extra times throughout the day and night, generally, every 2 to 3 hours, with a continuous glucose monitor CGM, monitor frequently. If your blood sugar has registered high blood glucose greater than 240 mg per dl, more than two times in a row, check for ketones to avoid decay. Call your doctor's office immediately, if you have medium or large ketones, and if instructed to with trace or small ketones. Be aware that some CGM sensors, Dexcom G5, Medtronic and Light, and Guardian, are impacted by acetaminophen, Tylenol. Check with finger sticks to ensure accuracy. Change your lancet every time you check your blood sugar. Wash your hands and clean your injection, infusion, and finger stick sites with soap and water or rubbing alcohol. When you call your doctor, have your glucose reading available. Have your ketone reading available. Keep track of your fluid consumption, you can use a 1 liter water bottle, and report. Be clear on your symptoms, for example are nauseated? Just a stuffy nose. Ask your questions on how to manage your diabetes. Attending routine appointments. People with diabetes should continue to attend their routine appointments as normal, unless they hear otherwise from their local GP practice, hospital, or diabetes team. The Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism wishes you a healthy and safe life. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, AASD Diabetes. Thank you.